Good day everyone and welcome to today's Living Life. Now I'm going to start off today by talking a lot about my seminary uh, that I graduated from, Torch Trinity Graduate University, but I have to give you a disclaimer. I am um, officially um, a, ambas a school ambassador, uh, am an ambassador for the school, right? So I wanted to talk about the school, but I'm not doing this just because I'm an ambassador. Um, I actually don't get paid anything, I don't get anything. I get access to the library, which I thought I already had. It, by the way, but anyway, um, so, you know, I don't get paid to do this or say this, but um, a lot of Koreans uh, until now have been going and they still go overseas to study for their bachelor or their graduate and PhD studies. Now, I somehow did the opposite because I never went to school in Korea. I never studied in Korea, but then um, I did my graduate studies, uh, my seminary graduate studies in Korea in English, interestingly enough. And um, the fact that I could get a world-class graduate education, you know, accredited and everything in Korea, in English, uh, is an amazing thing in itself. Now, uh, and it is world-class. Now, I'm not saying that it is the best in the world, and I'm not saying that I have no criticism uh, about the school whatsoever, but it is standard-wise and in terms of scope, it is world-class. It's so interesting and fascinating that I am more, I was and am more exposed to the nations in Korea, in my home country, in Asia, um, than when I was abroad, when I was living in Malaysia, in Singapore, and finally Australia before I came back. I am exposed and I have more friends from all over the world now than I ever have. The nations have um, have always been on God's heart. And I'd like to think uh, upon that my time in my seminary and the last few years have helped me to appreciate uh, this God's heart for the nations as well. So let's read the passage and then we'll continue. Jeremiah chapter 25 verses 15 through 29. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, said to me. Take from my hand this cup filled with the wine of my wrath, and make all the nations to whom I send you drink it. When they drink it, they will stagger and go mad, because of the sword I will send among them. So I took the cup from the Lord's hand and made all the nations to whom he sent me drink it. Jerusalem and the towns of Judah, its kings and officials, to make them a ruin and an object of horror and scorn, a curse as they are today. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, his attendants, his officials, and all his people, and all the foreign people there, all the kings of Uz, all the kings of the Philistines, those of Ashkelon, Gaza, Ekron, and the people left at Ashdod, Edom, Moab, and Ammon, all the kings of Tyre and Sidon, the kings of the coastlands across the sea, Dedan, Tema, Buzz, and all who are in distant places, all the kings of Arabia, and all the kings of the foreign people who live in the wilderness, all the kings of Zimri, Elam, and Media, and all the kings of the north, near and far, one after the other, all the kingdoms on the face of the earth. And after all of them, the king of Shishak will drink it too. Then tell them, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says, drink, get drunk and vomit and fall to rise no more because of a sword I will send among you. But if they refuse to take the cup from your hand and drink, tell them, this is what the Lord Almighty says, you must drink it. See. I am beginning to bring disaster on the city that bears my name, and will you indeed go unpunished? You will not go unpunished, for I am calling down a sword on all who live on the earth, declares the Lord Almighty. Now please indulge me a little bit more while I talk a little bit more about my seminary. Um, I was taught, uh, I talked about the, the world classness of our seminary, Torch Trinity Graduate University, just one more time. And I was taught by professors from all over the world. I had a Filipino systematic and missions professor. I had a Japanese missions professor, 
uh, this is all in English too, by the way, I had quite a few Korean American professors who I think are some of the best that I've ever met. Uh, I had a Romanian American Old Testament professor. I had, and of course, American professors and Korean professors. And then my fellow students too were from all over the place as well. I studied with two students from Iraq. They are known as the first seminarians from modern Iraq, the first to get an MDiv. I studied from students from um, India, Sri Lanka, Nagaland, Philippines, America, Australia, New Zealand, China, um, various African countries, uh, to name just a few. I'm sure I missed a couple. And of course, from Korea as well. And the interesting thing um, that I tell other people who are thinking about seminary, seminary especially towards Trinity Graduate University, uh, is that, um, you know, not only is there, are there huge financial advantages of studying in English in Korea, but it is actually more international to study uh, at Torch Trinity than studying abroad, like I already mentioned before. And also, it is more of an even playing field. Everyone struggles in some sense. Uh, the quote-unquote home team, you know, which would be the Koreans in Korea, right? They are studying there it's in their home country but in a foreign language English that you know that everyone has difficulty with um, but then you have people from English speaking countries like myself but then we have to learn Greek and Hebrew and especially Hebrew is the great equalizer because Hebrew is more of an Asian language and it is easier for in, uh, Asian speaking uh, people so everyone has trouble with something and even the home team so if you go to America you know the Americans uh, or you know English speaking people they would be studying in English and it's like their own language they've been growing up in that culture and language the whole time they you know kind of have a bit of an advantage here everyone is on a more evil uh, evil, equal playing field. And that created a much more harmonious uh, and um, humble atmosphere. And it was an atmosphere where we can learn from each other. And I believe that within that context, God fostered in everyone a heart for the nations as we mix and mingle uh, more evenly with people from everywhere. It's funny, but a couple of weeks ago, um, from when you are watching this devotional video now, um, I was preparing for this devotional, and I was writing notes uh, as I was going over the passage, and I wrote down, um, after reading today's passage, God's judgment is on all nations, which is why the people of God must also be missional towards all nations. Right? And I think you can see that in today's passage. And then that evening, just like two hours later, uh, at Onuri Church, we had a commissioning service of over, over 10,000 people, uh, 10,000 members of Onuri Church, um, going on summer outreach mission trips um, in, in over 350 groups, domestically and internationally. So we had a commissioning service. And this, what I wrote down was one of the points of our senior pastor's message on why we need to take the gospel to the nations, why we need to embrace the nations. Yesterday, I talked about how the world is already in judgment. While living in darkness, um, uh, in judgment, and, and, and having fallen short of the judgment of God, people think that they have or that they know the truth while living in darkness and bearing the fruit um, of, um, of darkness, of their sin. They think they have and know the truth. And in today's passage, I love, how, I love how God lists pretty much all the known countries and peoples of the time. And then, yeah, I think some that they don't know at the time as well. He's starting with Jerusalem, Judah, Egypt, Uz, uh, or Uz, uh, Philistines, and then from there, Ashkelon, Gaza, Ekron, Ashdod, um, Edom, Moab, Ammon, um, Tai and Sidon, and the coastlands across the sea, uh, Dedan, Tema, Buzz, and others in distant places, Arabia, and others in the wilderness, all peoples north, near, and far, and then Shishak. Now, you know, some of these countries don't appear anywhere else in the Old Testament as well. Yet God covers all of them because he knows all of them and his judgment is on all of them. And notice in verse 29, he says, I am, the, I am beginning with the city that bears my name. You know, God isn't like us. He is completely true and perfect. He doesn't pick and choose. He doesn't show favoritism. His judgment is completely even-handed. 
And so as our senior pastor spoke from Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 16 at the Missions Commissioning Service, where Jesus taught them, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Everyone who believes and is baptized will be saved, but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. So reviewing from the last few days of uh, Living Life Passages devotional that I've been able to share, we who were like sheep but have, um, have been called to be courageous fishers, who are refined through trial and testing, having our faith strengthened to receive a new heart for the nations from God, who is sovereign and master over all nations, to go into the nations that they may be saved and not condemned. Amen. Now it's telling that the main countries and peoples listed in today's passage are still the most gospel deprived countries in the world today. So let's start with these countries. Let's start praying for the Middle East region, the Syrian refugee crisis, the tension between Israel and pretty much every country in that region, but especially Pal uh, the Palestine, uh, Palestine and uh, the Christians especially and the missionaries there. And to help you start to pray for this for these uh, region, um, we need to research so that you can pray more specifically. And I want to share two websites uh, that will help you. Operationworld.org, just one word, Operation World, will give you um, every day a different country with vital statistics and information to pray through and pray for. And then also persecution.com, which is the website for Voice of the Martyrs that teaches us, that shows us and leads us how to pray for the persecuted church and Christians today. So let's begin there. This is the least we can do, and this is the starting point of how we can have the heart for the nations that God has given us. Amen. Let's pray. God, we just want to take time today to lift up the Middle East, O oh God, to you. We want to lift up Israel to you, uh, the place uh, where you came, Lord, where everything kind of began and spread from there. But Lord, at the same time, they are so deprived of the gospel. People are so lost and lost in darkness. And then all those countries around them, oh God. So right now, we just want to, we want to lift up the Christians, the churches underground and hidden uh, and persecuted there, the missionaries that are tirelessly spending years and decades of their lives uh, working with even just a few people uh, in danger for their lives, um, I pray that you will strengthen them, that you would encourage them now, O oh God. Lead us, help us to pray with a heart for the nations, O oh God, so that whether we are going, whether we are staying, whether we are sending, that we will have your heart in us, a heart for the nations. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This program is 시청자 여러분의 소중한 후원으로 제작됩니다. 